Hi, I'm Jerry Wayne, the Lord of Professor Emeritus at the Wharton School. Ran the Wharton Think Tank for about 30 years, the ACS Center for Advanced Studies and Management, and absolutely delighted to join you at the conference. The reality is that most legacy companies fail. And uh, part of, uh, of the failure is uh, the lack of ability to innovate effectively. How do we assure that we have the right innovation process, culture, uh, strategies, personnel, uh, experiences, approaches? Uh, and that's what we'll try to, to capture in my session. Purpose is one of the variables that, uh, or guidelines uh, that uh, people should take into account with the design uh, innovation. That innovation is the responsibility of everyone in the organization, and innovation with respect to everything. We typically think about innovation in terms of product or services. Innovation should be with everything we do. Innovation with the business model we have, the revenue model, innovation with uh, any function that the organization is performing. I uh, kind of expect to uh, to do in the, uh, the workshop that you're running uh, is to uh, discuss with the participants the forces of change, uh, uh, the technology, the empowered consumers, the uh, change in the media environment, the general business conditions the, uh, around the world, the glo globalization of business, the trade wars we're dealing with, uh, the um, digital divide, the economic divide, and others and uh, primarily uh, ask the participant to think about what are the implications of these changes to them, to their operation. One of the major implications is that you have to change what you're currently doing, uh, that you have to challenge the mental model uh, that drives the business. Challenging the status quo, challenging the mental model is absolutely critical. And you have to rethink what is the mental model of innovation that you have. And we'll try to provide discussion on the different guidelines for effective innovation. Uh, and this can include range all the way from uh, to what extent to create our strategy, the right objectives, vision, objective, and strategy for innovation, uh, as well as what is the organizational architecture that you have that supports innovation. Do you have the right culture, the right process, the right technology, the right, uh, the right uh, uh, talent, uh, to what extent you have the right resources, the right in performance measures and incentives, to what extent you have the right uh, network orchestration that allows you to basically uh, come up with the right innovations, uh, to what extent you're employing principles such as open innovation as opposed to trying to do everything internally. We'll try to explain basically how the world has changed and why do you have to rethink the way you are currently doing innovation and to rethink the whole innovation strategy, starting with the objective for innovation, the strategy for innovation, and the infrastructure that requir requires to allow you to succeed in your innovation efforts. That's the reason you see that the disruptors uh, are so successful, because they don't have to protect old assets they don't have to be afraid of, uh, you know, kind of taking risk. The current mental model that companies are using for innovation, uh, which does not reflect the changes in the world, does not reflect the enormous advances in science and technology, does not reflect uh, the empowered and skeptical consumers, the new consumer journey, and how do you deal with this. Uh, the fact that consumers are not looking for a product, they're looking for experiences. You hear a lot of excuses why innovation doesn't happen. Well, don't have the resources. I think that's what uh, <clears throat> Innovation does not really require more resources. It requires reallocation of resources and rethinking what you're doing. Every legacy company that's been around for a while, at least, at least 20% of the resources are wasted because of old procedures that don't have to be done. If you basically re-examine everything you do, you kind of reinvent the operations you have, you can easily save 20% of your current budget. Take this 20%, allocate this for more innovative, more courageous approaches. Most legacy companies still believe that the only way to innovate is to do it internally. So you hire the people and you develop an R&D function uh, and that's uh, problematic because, number one, innovation is not limited to R&D and not only in the product area. 
as we discussed before, the innovation should be of everything and by everyone. And uh, two, uh, the innovation uh, cannot uh, uh, be restricted uh, to a separate group in the organization that does it. Uh, first of all, you want to create an environment where everyone is empowered to innovate in their own area. And two, most importantly, you want to start to utilize open innovation. And open innovation is critical. I think the traditional assets is more employees and factories are a huge liability. And you can see um, you know, the enormous success of companies such as Li and Fong uh, in the trading area, which is primarily asset light. Uh, they have uh, a network of over 15,000 factories in over 40 countries, uh, but they don't own any of them. And they can basically come up with uh, any retailer that uh, places an order with them. Uh, they may divide the order among six factories in four countries and do it faster, better, cheaper than any single factory can do. And if there is uh, economic... Uh, changes in the world or kind of uh, Trump and announces on tariffs on uh, Chinese product, they have no problem moving the production from China to other countries. Being asset light is a huge advantage in today's environment. And uh, the being tied to traditional assets and employees is one of the liabilities, one of the problems uh, facing legacy companies, and that's where you need the courage to move away from these type of models. The real asset in today's environment is uh, kind of uh, leadership, management skills, ability to operate an agile, asset light uh, network. And that's where basically you want to focus on network orchestration. How do you orchestrate the various resources out there? They've never in the history of mankind been easier time to start a company. If you have the good idea, you know, there are plenty of funding, you can get easy funding, and you can get all the resources available out there without you having to hire everyone. You have to hire to think about how do I hire a small core group of the designers, the architects of the enterprise that I'm trying to create, as opposed to building empires. First, I think it's critical that the CEO attends because uh, a culture of organization and direction is typically coming from the CEO. Uh, the organization, if they don't have the right CEO, that they can basically try to rely on their entrepreneurial champions in running business units and others. But ideal for any organization uh, is to have a CEO that provides the tone and the direction. The session in general will provide a great opportunity to interact with some thought leaders from industry academia and create an amazing network with other CEOs who share similar type problems. We'll try to identify what are the challenges that face each one of you, try to explore what are the implications of the force of change, what are the implications of the huge advances in science and technology, um, the the power of AI, cognitive computing, uh, blockchain, uh, other scientific and technological development, what are the implications to your business? Uh, and then once you examine the implication to your business, what are the implications to the needed innovation engine that you need in your business? I define innovation as we discussed very broadly in terms of it's innovating of everything that the organization does by everyone, not by a small group of people. It will probably go through a set of guidelines how to improve the effectiveness of your innovation. So you may want to look at this in terms of how to maximize the ROI on your innovation activities uh, in the organization. And um, one of the things we discussed is we may send each of the participants before the session a short self-assessment tool that they will allow them to evaluate uh, their organizations on uh, somewhere around uh, 20 or so dimensions of innovation. And once they do the self-assessment in the session itself, we'll explain why each one of these 20 dimensions are important and what you have to do to try to move toward it, which will allow them specific to develop an individualized guideline how they can improve the innovation of uh, the, the effectiveness of their organization. A critical question every CEO should ask himself or herself <clears throat> is to what extent uh, their innovation process 
uh, address effectively the changes in the world, if address effectively and takes advantage of uh, the development in AI in cognitive computing. Uh, what if every consumer in the world will have access to a Watson on their smartphone, which is two, three years away from today? Uh, what are the implications of blockchain? What are the implications of some of the other scientific development of the genomic revolution of personalized medicine? Uh, to what extent uh, your organization and your innovation process address effectively these changes? Uh, to what extent you can address effectively the changes in the consumer? The fact that consumers are much more empowered today, they're skeptical, they don't trust businesses, they have a very complex uh, uh, consumer journey, uh, that uh, they basically don't believe anymore in the traditional vertical view of the world uh, because their experience is across industries. So if they expect to get <coughs> Uh, from Federal Express immediate notification where their package is at any given point in time. They expect this from every other uh, company they are dealing with. It's not limited now only in the Federal Express area. Most companies, especially legacy companies, are still thinking within silos. Um, so I think that uh, part of the questions that every CEO should ask himself or herself is to what extent the company really addresses the changes in the, the world and to what extent their innovation process uh, reflect this. The second question they should ask is to what extent uh, their business model and revenue model and the underlying mental model of the business and of the innovation process uh, is still relevant in today's environment. Um, and unfortunately, in most situations when you examine legacy companies, and especially legacy companies that are no longer in the Fortune 500, uh, you find out that they have uh, archaic uh, mental models and uh, very traditional business and revenue models and are, that are not really addressing the needs of today's environment. Uh, and the third question is, I think, it's more for self-assessment, to what extent I, as the leader of the organization, have the courage to change, uh, to what extent I have enough self-confidence to empower my employees and others to take the initiative and innovate as opposed to just waiting for direction from me. Uh, to what extent am I really designing strategies which are truly win-win-win for everyone, for the customer, for the employees, for the shareholders, and for society?